want you to hit me as hard as you can. What if I told you that Romero's original trilogy, which ended in 1985, somehow pulled off one of the rarest feats? Ending on such a high note, Costanza himself would look down from the clouds and smile. The summer of George! Day the Dead is Romero's best entry, hands down. And I'm here to tell you why. I want to thank you guys for watching The Black Sheep and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now back to the show. Zombies are firmly in the forefront of the mainstream public consciousness. And in doing so, they have lost their edge. It's a simple oversaturation in the market. Yet when done right, they can still show off some of the original Romero magic. And zombies have always been instrumental in representing these fears. Romero was responsible for creating the modern zombie and setting the rules that we still live by today. And what George A. Romero started in 1969 hit its high water mark in 1985. Night of the Living Dead is a classic black and white flick with a little gore and plenty to say about its chaotic times. Dawn perfected this by using color, growing the zombie herd and upping the gore. Of course, Savini was the secret ingredient here. Use the shopping mall setting to explore the dead's behavior, mankind's selfishness. These were and still are both amazing films, which set up the last chapter and its magnum opus, Day of the Dead. When boiled down, Dawn of the Dead has hope, but not day. No, no, hope belongs in Sewataneo sending a boat. Sewataneo. Day takes place far enough into the zombie apocalypse that society is basically crumbled and the human race is nearing extinction. This bleak tone is not only a natural progression from the initial outbreak, but the culmination of the previous two films. Now most of the story takes place in an underground missile silo with a small group of scientists and military personnel who have been tasked with finding a remedy to the outbreak. They are led by the hero scientist Sarah Bowman, played by Lori Cardiel and the military captain, Henry Rhodes, played by the great Joseph Pilato, who just happens to steal this whole movie. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time! We start at the turning point in the survivor community. The former commander has died with Rhodes moving up in rank. He has streamlined this into a power grab. Buddy else have any questions about the way things are going to run around here from now on? What little democracy that may have survived is now as dead as this. There's never a moment in this group where we feel a common goal and that any sense of community has long since died. We are witnessing the last gasp, the crumbling foundation of a human society, the embers of a dying fire. In one of the first meetings, Captain Rhodes threatens death if she doesn't obey an order and sit down. Sit down or so help me God, I'll have you shot. <laughs> you see this? This is what I would consider the lighthearted part of the film. Threatening death for a very blasé refusal of an order. Day of the Dead is all about the collapse, the cynical last breath of civilization. Now you may be tricked into thinking there is a better way forward, but Day's strength is crushing one's optimism with a harsh, cruel reality. When we enter this world, supplies and food are diminished. Yet Dr. Frankenstein, the mad but brilliant scientist played by Richard Liberty, is actually making progress, or so it seems. He's focusing on zombie behavior over causation. Now with a cure being unlikely, he starts to develop ways that they may be domesticated. Now if you can't beat them, control. Domestication is represented by Bub. Bub. That's what the club fellows used to call my father. We get to learn more about the dead's familiar behavior, which was touched upon in Dawn. And it's here we get the sense that there is a, a little bit of humanity left within the living dead. Now a concept like this is a tricky thing to do, yet is handled with respect and nuance by Bub's actor Sherman Howard, or because people are gonna bitch in the comments, he is credited as Howard Sherman. Bub could have come off more clumsy or forced, but walks the line and never comes across as goofy. You grow to feel for him. There's a warmth and sensitivity to this puppy-like zombie. Now you see, this is where Land of the Dead failed. Bub is how you kind of handle intelligent zombies in a way that doesn't seem laughable. But let's go to Land of the Dead and Big Daddy vocally communicating with the herd. 
This level of intelligence can never work. It's like having a trained raptor, and I f***ing hated that. It just diminishes any threat of the monster and makes it a joke. What the fuck is this? But either way, back to day. This progress means little to nothing as Dr. Frankenstein is killed for using the dead military personnel as zombie treats for Bub. And here's the thing, I do buy that Frankenstein is so far removed from reality that he wouldn't think of using a dictator's comrades as food as a bad idea. What are you giving him in there, Frankenstein? And when it comes to Rhodes, he's a perfect grade A asshole that brings a lot of passion and charm, man. The 80s had the best villains, and it's their lack of humanity and, and over-the-top embodiment that I miss so much these days. I mean, man, everyone is an anti-hero now. I'm just so bored. This is a fucking war! There's always been a critique about Day having no likable characters, but that's just not true. Is it deeply cynical and nihilistic? Sure, yeah. But that's what makes his characters more interesting than the previous entries. It's just that everyone is miserable and stressed here. We are witnessing end times. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a fun shopping montage, but it's not needed. Time has progressed and things are a lot worse off now. They're still likable, they're just not hopeful. The only people remotely calm here are the Jamaican helicopter pilot and the Irish Mr. Bean. And all the shopping malls are closed. Seriously, this drunk dude is Mr. Bean. And my only complaint is we didn't get enough of him. Every dead film mirrors its time, and this is no different. Day is deeply suspicious of the amount of unchecked power the military has, and of the military industrial complex as a whole. Yet it's intertwined into an engaging story. Day of the Dead asks the question, if the structures of society crumbled, would the military be on our side? Or would they crown themselves king? Day of the Dead shows that Rhodes and his crew are deeply suspicious of science. What could come as a savior to everyone would mean giving up their leverage, their power. And anybody fucks with my command, they get court-martialed. This is a world where the human spirit is faded, where sexual aggression and hints of rape are constantly on the table where brute force is not only threatened, but seen as a reasonable method in communication. Do as I say, or die, is the new law of the land. Do we come together, or are we permanently driven apart? Are the monsters outside truly worse than the ones within? Now these questions are as old as time, story threads that have been used for generations. And Romero wisely uses them as set dressing for his nihilistic zombie tale. When it comes to selling the zombies, Day hits its peak. With a slightly higher budget, Tom Savini and Greg Nicotero come together to give us what we've always wanted. They realize the zombie to what we've all come to know and love. And here's the thing, I'll be honest, I've personally never cared for the look of the zombies from Dawn of the Dead. And here's the thing, I get it, the budget was smaller and this was the beginning of the outbreak. And of course it doesn't take away my enjoyment of an excellent sequel, but the painted green and blue faces never derived any fear or shock, and they've always looked like extras with stage paint. Again, I get it, there's no need to complain, I'm just saying that Day gave us a look that we still use today. We get more decay, battle wounds, and overall wear and tear. A perfect match for a perfect film. And my defense of Day of the Dead is not punching down on the first two, no. Night and Dawn have transcended horror and made George Romero a legend. There's a reason why his creation is a template for all. Those films have earned their rightful spot in cinema history, and deservedly so. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Between the stoic and tough performance by Laurie Cardille and a character that has actual obstacles to overcome. A charming helicopter pilot played by Terry Alexander that somehow lets uh, almost nothing bother him. Uh, cheers, buddy. To Joseph Pilato kicking ass and taking names. Those are my men in there! Here's the thing, I actually saw him at Flashback Weekend during a screening of Day of the Dead and he was drinking and talking shit to the other characters on screen. It was amazing. It was basically my own special commentary right next to me. I'm gonna tell you this, this man is a f***ing champ and an overall great guy. But Day works because it's all about the loss and not the triumph over it. From its cynical point of view to the darker nature of humanity, Romero saved his most honest and brutal view of the human race for his ending chapter. It's one's lack of empathy and lack of communication that puts the final punctuation on the end of the world.
Well, if we stay down here long enough, I'll have to lay off the fucking booze still, because there won't fucking be any of it fucking left. 